Uh, Luke chapter 22, Fraser has taken us uh, into Matthew's Gospel, um, four Gospels, four different viewpoints. Um, uh, we're going to look and we're going to consider something of Peter, as he said. Uh, Peter, a fascinating character in the Bible, um, one of the great characters in the Bible, I suppose, to study, and one of the disciples that we know most about um, from Scripture. He's impulsive, yet he's devoted. He's a leader and yet can be um, marked with doubt at times. But Peter's journey from being a simple fisherman um, to a cornerstone of the Christian faith exemplifies transformation through faith and the power of redemption. And nowhere is this more obvious than in Peter's denial of Jesus. And in true Fraser style, I've got three headings. Um, that I thought of while I was sitting down here listening to Fraser's headings. So we've got Peter's denial predicted, we've got Peter's denial performed, and we've got Peter's denial pardoned at the end. So verse 31 of of Luke 22, just for a couple of verses. This is to do with Peter's denial. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. There's three things that we're going to look at just very quickly in this passage before we move on to the next one. First of all, notice that Jesus is praying for Peter. You know, there's nobody I would rather have praying for me than the Lord Jesus. Jesus, knowing everything that was about to happen, it's lovely to think that he's already covered Peter in prayer. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you've returned to me, strengthen your brethren. You know, Peter, as we go through this passage, is going to have a very dark and very troublesome night. But the time has been prepared for by Christ. And we'll see that his faith doesn't fail and that he indeed does return. Jesus wasn't done with Peter just yet. So first thing I want you to notice that Jesus was praying for Peter. The second thing I want you to notice is that Peter says that he's ready to go with Jesus to prison and to death. A very bold statement. A very bold statement indeed. And we sometimes look at these statements of Peter. We sometimes look at the things that Peter does. And as I said at the start, he comes across as quite an impulsive character at times. And we sometimes think that Peter is foolish for saying this thing. But Peter is actually absolutely correct in what he says because we'll read in the book of Acts that Peter will go and he will be arrested, and he will be put in prison for the preaching of the gospel. And in that passage, indeed, there's reference made because he was seen to have been with Jesus. And yet, as we'll see from his denial, that was the thing that he denied the most. And then, whilst we don't have evidence from it from scriptures, early church tradition would tell us that Peter will be martyred as well, upside down on a cross. And Christ himself would predict that Peter would die by this kind of death, but that it would be glorifying to God. In John chapter 21, we'd find that. So Peter is indeed going to do these things, but he's not ready for these things just yet. Over the next few days, Peter is going to be transformed from this impulsive character, from this person who um, makes these rash statements And Peter is going to be transformed into something that the Lord can use through the power of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes things. And you see it so often when you look at characters in the Bible. We've talked about Paul in the past. We've talked about other characters in the past that when they've come to the realization of Christ who has risen from the dead, it has completely changed them because they no longer are relying on earthly things in many respects. They're relying fully and totally on the Lord Jesus. And then thirdly from this one, just before we move on, notice that Jesus not only knows that he'll deny him, but he'll, he knows the exact time 
and the circumstance in which Peter will find himself. We, Fraser kind of alluded to this, but sometimes the death of the Lord Jesus may seem chaotic, it may seem out of order, it may seem like everything that has been planned has, been gone, to, has gone to pot. This Messiah, this, one, this promised one who was going to come and sort everything out is now heading towards the cross of Calvary. But every last second, every last detail of this plan has been carefully planned out and prepared for. It's a sign of the all-knowing nature of Jesus. So, Peter's denial predicted. So, let's go down to verse 54 and actually look at at Peter's denial of the Lord Jesus. Verse 54 says this, Having arrested him, that is Jesus, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house, but Peter followed at a distance. Now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them, and a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, woman, I do not know him. And after a while, another saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, surely this fellow also was with him for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Some of the saddest verses, I think, in Scripture. We can all be determined at times, and we can all think that we're going to do these things, and what we say is our bond, and what we've said is going to happen is the thing that's going to happen. And yet, we find that only several hours have passed, only a certain amount of time has passed, and Peter has gone from saying, yes, I'm going to go with you to prison, and even unto death. And now he's denied him three, t- three different times. What was it that broke Peter in the end? Was it the might and terror of the Roman Empire? No, it wasn't, was it? Was it the power and authority of the Jewish Sanhedrin, of the the Jewish religious state? No. Verse 56, it was a little servant girl that Peter was challenged by and he would deny the Lord Jesus for the first time. The great defender of Christ, reduced to a man cursing and swearing at some passers-by. Read that in one of the other Gospels. Proverbs chapter 16 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Peter is about to fall. Peter has fallen and is falling hard, but we're going to see who's there to pick him up. And we'll go through similar circumstances in our own lives. We'll fall, we'll falter, we'll stumble. I wonder who is there to pick us up at the end. And what must have been the most cutting is what happens in verse 61. As Peter is cursing and swearing, as he's denying the Lord Jesus, he hears the cock crowing and he comes face to face and eye to eye with the Savior. Lord Jesus looks at him just as the cock is crowing. And he hears Peter's denial and what's going on. I think Peter must have imagined this going much more differently. What an opportunity for Peter Peter to swing in and to save the Son of God from what was going on, and yet that was never part of the plan. The days of the crucifixion would be difficult. The days after the crucifixion would be difficult. They would be huddled in rooms, and they would be wondering what's going on. And I think for Peter, that guilt of knowing that he had denied the Lord Jesus. At the time that we could say that the Lord Jesus perhaps needed them the most, the time when the Lord Jesus was most alone, and this man that had said, I will go with you to prison, I will go with you to death, had denied him. Well, Peter would see the Savior risen again after the crucifixion, but I wonder how how he could have looked the Lord Jesus in the eye knowing these things. But let's just go to John 21. We've thought about Peter's denial. 
predicted, we thought about Peter's denial performed, and now we're going to think about Peter's denial pardoned. John 21, verse 2, Simon, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel of Cain and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to him, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast it and now they're able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging a net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but a hundred yards off. Is there any wonder at the start of this passage that Peter says, I'm going fishing? Perhaps, I think he maybe wanted to get away from things, perhaps there was a, a reason for that, but he wanted to get away into something that was familiar, something that he knew, somewhere where there was no other people there except the other disciples. And what do we find? Jesus comes to Peter. Now, by human standards, the Lord would have been perfectly justified in just forgetting about Peter. You denied me. You had a chance. Chance God, that's it. And in many ways, that's the same with all of us. We've all denied the Lord Jesus. We've all had our own opinions of the Lord Jesus. There have all been times when we've said, no, that's not for me. And the Lord would be perfectly justified in saying, no, no more. But the Lord comes to meet Peter where he is. Comes to meet Peter where he is. The Lord comes and meets us in whatever state or situation we're in. And such was Peter's joy at seeing the Lord. He jumps overboard and makes his way to the shore. Remember what the Lord said previously. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So Peter's courage had certainly failed that night when he denied the Lord Jesus. But we see that his faith obviously hasn't. Was that anything to do with Peter? No, I don't think it was. Was it everything to do with the Lord? Absolutely. And there are others there in that scene in John. But Jesus speaks specifically to Peter. And he asks him possibly the most painful question it was possible to ask Peter at that time. Do you love me? Do you love me? Now, to us, that might seem like a silly question. Well, just look at Peter's actions. He had a chance, and he blew it. He had a chance, and he said he didn't even know you. Surely that's an answer to this question. But three times over, the Lord Jesus says to Peter, Do you love me? Why three times? Well, in a simple sense, we know Peter denied Jesus three times, and three times Jesus is giving him a chance to reaffirm his love. We can delve into the different words that Jesus and Peter are using about love, and we can understand that the Lord is probing the depths of Peter's love, love for him. We can see that each time Jesus is changing slightly his instruction going forward to try and help Peter to understand what his role was going to be going forward. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. But at its most basic, it's showing the depth of the Lord's forgiveness and his desire to restore those he loves back into a close relationship with him. Peter was being restored. Peter could once again move forward. And we see, when we look in the book of the Acts, and we see everything that Peter accomplished, we see a changed man. We see a man who was perhaps no longer impulsive, perhaps who was no longer doubtful, was certainly still a leader, but a one, one who was absolutely committed to the Lord Jesus and would go with him to prison and even unto death. You know, that offer of restoration is open to each one of us today. We've all turned our back on Christ at some point. We've all been ashamed of our actions. And yet Christ is willing to forgive even the vilest offender who truly believes, who in that moment a pardon receives.
So there we have Peter, the denier. It was predicted, it was performed, but it was pardoned as well, and Peter was restored. And that offer of salvation is open up to each and every one of us today as well. The Lord Jesus invites us to come and to have our sins forgiven and to have that close and personal relationship with him again. (coughs) Excuse me, shall we close in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our consideration tonight of these two different people of Judas and of Peter. We thank our Father of their backgrounds, we think of the, the things that happened to them, but we give thanks, our Father, that the Lord Jesus was glorified in all these circumstances. We give thanks, our Father, that it was all in thy eternal will that the Lord Jesus would go to the cross of Calvary. We thank our Father of what we've learned tonight, of what we've heard. We thank our Father of that offer of restoration. We think of that offer of salvation that's open to each and every one of us. And we pray that if there be any person tonight who has not committed their life to Christ, who has not bowed the knee, who has not confessed their sins and had that offer of salvation freely given, that tonight might be the night. And so, our Father, we just give thanks for this evening. I ask for a blessing on every single one of us in the Saviour's precious name. Amen.